Damn it. Missed the last Almost cleaned it. Almost. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the NRL 22 competition that I just got into and have been uh, a part of building a new chapter in my local area. We'll talk a little bit about that, but we're also going to be talking about the CZ457 Varmint. 22 LR rifle and the Discovery Op 5 to 25 Gen 2 that I am using for these competitions. Now, this is something that uh, I kind of got, I don't want to say pushed into, uh, <laughs> I uh, volunteered to be a part of creating a new chapter in the North Central Kansas area. We are known as the Flint Hill Plinksters and uh, this is uh, something that you can find on practice score. I'll leave that information in the pinned comment. If you guys are in the area or in the region and you wanna travel to shoot with us, I encourage you guys to do that because uh, first time shooters, they get to shoot for free. Uh, kids under the age of 18, they get to shoot for free as well, obviously with adult supervision. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is something that I have been a part of and uh, really need to say a huge thank you to Brett and Austin who have been spearheading uh, the launch of this new chapter because uh, these guys have been doing a lot of the hard work. Um, I've been helping out where I can by building props and setting up the uh, the range before competitions, leading squads, scoring, those types of things. But at the end of the day, those two guys have been really doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So uh, essentially, what is NRL 22? Well, that is a competition that kind of blends the 22 long rifle world with PRS shooting. So you get a dynamic stage to shoot a number of different targets at different ranges. Uh, there are two different options that you can shoot, either option one, which is usually 100 yards and in, or option two that could be out to two, three, even further yardages. So uh, it's something that is realistically a lot of fun and uh, in comparison to PRS ends up being a little bit more cost effective <laughs> as well. Uh, you're not spending thousands upon thousands of dollars on a rifle. Uh, you're not spending hundreds of dollars on ammunition. <clears throat> although there are people that do. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, this is something brand new to me, and uh, I just wanted to work on some skills that I'm pretty deficient in when it comes to understanding and reading wind, uh, making sure that I'm using my holdovers correctly, dialing if I need to, those types of things when it comes to precision shooting is something that uh, I really struggle with, and, and I was hoping that this competition is going to help me with that and I think it has. Before we get into the video any further, let's take a break for this video's sponsor. All right, guys, you know that I'm not going to do an ad read unless I like, and most importantly, use the product, which is why today's sponsor is Vertex. I've been a longtime fan of the cutback tactical pants that I've worn through many workouts, competitions, training courses, and just everyday wear since 2020. Vertex now has the Defiant Jeans that is not only a new favorite of mine, but also my camera guy and podcast co-host, Hefe Actual. But hands down, my new go-to is the Delta Stretch 2.1 pants due to its common appearance yet rugged construction, awesome for work or play. Vertex is also known for their EDC fanny packs, backpacks, and gloves. I've been loving the Assault 2.0 gloves that I've been using at the range lately. Take 15% off your entire order by using code FITANDFIRE15. You heard me correct, 15% off when you use the code FITANDFIRE15 at checkout. It's a great way to tell Vertex that I sent you while getting some great gear. Link and code in the pinned comment, go check it out. All right, so let's talk about the optic and rifle setup that I have for NLR 22, and that is going to be this right here. It's the CZ457 Varmint, which is a 20 inch bull barrel uh, with you know a really nice 60 degree action on here that is super easy to uh, manipulate. 
We'll talk about some of the features that it has with this here in just a second, but we're also looking at the Discovery Optics 5 to 25 by 56 Gen 2 EDS PRS, uh, or ED PRS rather. And uh, this has actually been a really good setup for NLR22, especially for base class. There are two classes in NRL22, which is uh, base class, which is going to be a rifle and optic with no changes to it whatsoever. And you have to meet a certain MSRP or be under that. For this year, they just increased it from $1,200 to $1,400. So your rifle and your optic, it's MSRP, no matter what you paid for it, the MSRP online from the manufacturer must be below $1,400. And that's what we have right here. Now, the specific reason as to why I ended up choosing the CZ over Tika, Bagara, or Ruger is because this does three things very, very well. Number one is there's a lot of aftermarket support, which isn't necessarily foreign to those other manufacturers, but I feel that there is a little bit more aftermarket support for the CZ rifles than there are some of the other ones. Number two is uh, accuracy. Now, that's a contentious point on the interweb. Some people think that the accuracy of the CZ457 isn't where it should be for the price point, but from my experience and what I need it to do, I think it does just fine. In fact, it's out shooting me. Uh, I just need to be better. And that's <laughs> what I'm working on each and every single time I go out and compete. Now, the third reason is price point. As mentioned with base class, I need to be under a certain MSRP. Uh, the MSRP on this is sitting right around $699, which does sound, sound, sound like a lot for a 22 lr rifle. Uh, and it is, it, it really is. But um, for what I was needing it to do, uh, the money that I had to spend, because I did purchase this rifle on my own, um, it does exactly what I needed to do. That's the end of the end of the discussion on that point. Uh, could it be better? Sure, but then you're going to start getting into open class. Open class again is exactly what you would expect it to be. Sky's the limit. You can spend as much money on your optic and your rifle as you want. You can change out triggers. You can change out barrels. Do whatever you want to it um, to make you more competitive. So. Uh, there you have it. I have added a Harris bipod, which is still within the parameters of base class. So um, I've had no complaints with this. The rifle itself is uh, pretty nice. It has a loaded chamber indicator. The action is really easy to actuate. Um, I've got some arthritis working on this hand, uh, especially with my index knuckle. And I will tell you that coming up and swiping here, um, is not bothering my uh, arthritis at all. I can't believe I'm talking about arthritis in my hands, but getting to that age. Um, the stock is absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be a Turkish walnut. And that's another great thing about the CZ rifle is if I want to get into open class, there are going to be a tons of chassis that I can choose from to swap this out should I choose to move up in that division. I have chosen the Area 419 Picatinny section here to mount the optic to. And this is going to have a 30 MOA cant to it. So you're going to have an additional 30 MOA for dialing your turrets. Uh, should you choose to shoot in option two at some of the larger um, competitions for NRL 22, those will be shooting out to like two, three, and even further 100 yards. Um, so you want to make sure that you have as much dialing capability on your elevation as possible before you start getting into your holdovers. And that's one of the great things about the Area 419 mount. This does come with a five round magazine, but I have actually ended up purchasing four 10 round magazines to make sure that I have plenty for these competitions, regardless of what the stage is going to be like. I'll always have a magazine loaded up, ready to go. All right, so let's get into the optic. Uh, this is going to be the Discovery Optics 5 to 25 by 56 
ED PRS Gen 2, and it's going to be very similar to an optic that I've already looked at. I've taken a look at their 3 to 15 MPVO and found that that optic was punching above its weight class um, for the price, definitely. Um, but I wanted to use that optic for this, but 15 power. For me, it just wasn't enough. Uh, I needed more magnification uh, for some of those smaller targets at further distances. And we're talking, in some cases, shooting like a two inch target at 100 yards, which is still MOA accuracy, but you're shooting from, you know, a ladder or you're shooting on top of a rooftop, you know, feature. Um, you know, a mock-up thing, you know, it's obviously Secret Service training, right? Yep. But <laughs> um, that type of accuracy uh, is something that um, is somewhat foreign to me. So I need as much magnification as I possibly can get. And that's why I chose to go with the okay. higher range for five to 25. Now I typically stay in between like the 17 to 20, 21 power depending on the stage. If it's something where I'm transitioning from short range, like 40 yards out to um, 100 yards, then I'll usually put it at like 17 or 18 power to give me a wider field of view. And that way I can kind of um, get into those targets a little bit easier that way. If it's a set target at like 75 yards or 80 yards, then um, I will probably dial that magnification up a little bit more and then use my turret to dial to a specific uh, dope and then just run the course from there. Now the interesting thing about NLR22 is you're also going to need to know your holdovers and utilize those. So I have a dope card attached to the optic and it has my uh, dopes written out in 25 yard increments. So 25, 50, 75, 100. And then you just kind of do a little bit of fuzzy math in between there. And the reason for that is some of the stages will not allow you to dial your uh, elevation turret. You have to keep it at zero and you have to use your holdovers. So this optic does have a Christmas tree style uh, reticle, which is something that I really, really do like. And uh, I have been using it quite a bit and it's been a great training aid, uh, to say the least. So uh, that's another reason why I like this optic so very much. It does have parallax adjustment down to 25 yards. And I know that some of the higher end optics, such as like the um, Razer HD 2 Gen 2 or whatever, um, it, it'll probably go down to like 10 yards which is fine, but I don't need it to go that far down because we're not going to shoot targets any closer than 25 yards for safety purposes. So uh, 25 yard parallax adjustment is just fine. And then it goes all the way up to 500 yards. And then the next setting after that is going to be infinity. Um, it also has a illuminated reticle, which I actually did use. Typically I don't, but in the first stage of um, this previous competition here in October. Uh, I ended up using it because we were in the shade. Uh, it was still pretty early morning and uh, I just needed a little bit more contrast between what I was looking at through the optic and uh, the target downrange. So turning on that illumination to like the number two setting uh, was extremely helpful in uh, making sure that I could find that reticle fairly easy. Now the uh, turrets are really nice. You can hear them here. Very loud, very tactile, uh, which is something I really do like. And it seems as if the turrets are uh, fairly precise. I'm not going to say that they're going to be as good as a Leopold or a Night Force or anything like that, but I think they do what I needed to do very well. So uh, the thing I will say that I would like to see with the turrets are two things. Number one is I would like them to be locking. Um, a lot of people are like, well, you really don't need them to be locking for PRS shoot, regardless if it's 22 long rifle or higher calibers. But if I wanted to take this and put it onto like a hunting rifle or uh, use it for, you know, more of a tactical purpose, I would like to have um, the turrets locking so that if they get bumped against something or, um, you know, I'm walking through the brush or whatever, I don't have to worry about this turning. 
I would like to see that option. The next thing is, as you can see on the top of the elevation, you have this really nice flathead screw that you can pop off to adjust zero, which I think is really, really great. It does come with zero stops and all that jazz as you would expect. But the windage does not have that feature. Instead, it has four Allen screws, and I would really suggest swapping that out for a single flathead screw like we have here on the uh, elevation. The reason for that is with the elevation, I can just take a spent shell casing, regardless of the caliber, and use that to uh, unscrew and adjust the turret as I need to, whereas I have to have an Allen wrench for the windage, and I, I, I just sometimes don't have it with me, you know? So now I've got to figure out how am I going to make those adjustments should I need to. By having it identical on both sides, that's one less tool that you're going to have to worry about. Another great thing about this optic is that it's going to come with everything that you need for um, you to mount this onto your rifle. So obviously it's going to come with the uh, optic itself. It's going to come with the scope rings and the scope rings already have all the torque specifications on the scope rings themselves. So you don't have to guess as to what torque you need to put these screws on. It's right there. You don't have to read a manual. It's really, really intuitive. It's also going to come with a leveling kit, which I thought was really cool as well. It's going to come with turret cap, or um, it's going to come with lens caps and sunshades and all of the tools to mount this. So that is a, another great feature about this optic and the MSRP on this is going to be $399. Uh, I would say that this does punch up above its class, uh, but at the same time, obviously it's not going to be as good as a $1,500 scope or a $2,000 scope. It's just not. One of the things that I've noticed is that if you don't get your sight picture uh, perfect when you get behind your optic, uh, you're going to notice a little bit of a distortion, uh, maybe a, like a fisheye effect just ever so slightly if you're coming in behind and you're kind of canted to one side, you're going to find a little bit of a distortion in the image itself and that uh, reticle is going to be a little blurred. So that's not a great thing, but at the same time, it also tells you that should be a telltale sign. It's like, hey, I'm not behind this uh, scope as well as I should be, so you just need to make a quick adjustment. However, some of the higher end optics are not going to have that type of parallax issue, so um, you know you can be a little off in your sight picture, but still get accurate hits on target. So uh, yeah, that pretty much covers this uh, setup as I see it. Again, I would say that uh, accuracy on this probably could be a lot better. Um, there's some things that I probably need to do to improve the accuracy as well. But at the end of the day, this is, this is a journey for me. I haven't really uh, gotten into 22 long rifle stuff very much. So learning as I go, essentially. Uh, again, I think the CZ457 is uh, as accurate as it, as it needs to be, at least for my skill level. As I get into uh, the NRL22 competition more uh, and understand where the deficiencies are for this rifle, then that's where I'm going to start looking into either upgrading certain aspects of this rifle or upgrading the rifle itself, get into open class, those types of things. So essentially, I think that this is going to do well and I think that I've improved as well. Uh, we've had three matches since we started this chapter of the NLR 22 uh, shooting league and I've been able to participate in the first and the third. Uh, the September match, I wasn't able to do that because I was at TriggerCon, but uh, the first match, I got my butt handed to me, um, and it was a very humbling experience, but it was a very good experience as well. Uh, the last match in October, I have improved quite a bit, and I will say that um, I was very happy with myself. Out of 20 shooters, I placed seventh, but I did end up placing first in my division. So base class division, I did place first, and the six guys in front of me were all open division. So uh, I will say that uh, 
that was a pretty awesome experience. Not to say that that really means anything, but it just shows that I've been improving and understanding how to use my turrets, how to understand to use my dope and holdovers and all that type of stuff, which is really what I'm aiming for when it comes to these competitions and this rifle. With all of that being said, I really encourage you guys to check out uh, some of these uh, 22 long rifle competitions, regardless if that is going to be BR-50 or uh, NRL-22. If you guys are in the uh, North Kansas region, uh, whether you're in Nebraska or Southern Kansas or whatever the case may be, uh, I'd encourage you guys to take a look at the uh, Flint Hill Plinksters. I'll leave the practice score information in the pinned comment. And if you want to come out and watch, by all means, come out and watch. Uh, spectators are free. Uh, or if you want to compete, you're more than welcome to come. And uh, if you need a rifle, we'll get you set up. Even if you need to borrow my rifle, I will uh, definitely hook you guys up if you guys come out and check things out. So there you have it. Uh, there's the initial look at the CZ457, uh, about 300 rounds through it. And I'm going to obviously have far more content, not only for the rifle, but the optic itself. Uh, I have a second five to 25 that is going to be put onto my six, five Creedmoor for uh, deer season. That's coming up here pretty soon. So we're going to get an opportunity to see how well it performs with larger calibers and um, yeah, go from there. So with all that being said, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. Um, this has been a very cool experience to not only help set up a match, uh, but to continue to be squad leading and scoring and uh, helping set everything up. It's just been um, very educational to say the least. With all that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. Check out the Live Laugh Lark podcast. I'll have tons of information in the pinned comment and we'll catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye y'all.